Please let me go. I did exactly what you asked. Let's try this again. Just like last time, but better. Just like the first time, but better? You mean like... Spy Kids 2, The Island of Lost Dreams. The product of director Robert Rodriguez realizing that the only thing better than being a spy kid is being a spy kid too. Spy Kids 2 released on August 7th in the year 2002, just over a year after the first film. Personally, this was my favorite of the Spy Kids films. It had everything the first film had, but with more. More gadgets, more adventure, more disturbing creatures, more Spy Kids, more Steve Buscemi. Some of the effects haven't aged the best, but at the time I thought the Spider Monkey was one of the most realistic and terrifying things I'd ever seen. Even though it was supposed to be a good guy, the design of that horrid creature kept me up at night for weeks but that may have just been my arachnophobia. With a brand new adventure in theaters that was just bursting with potential for toy tie-ins, kids all over the world were asking, no, begging McDonald's, where are the Happy Meal toys? And McDonald's was there to answer the call. Roll the intro. For decades, pop culture and American consumerism have conjugated in the McDonald's play place ball pit to produce the holy grail of every child's eye, the Happy Meal toy. These toys cycle out different themes every few weeks to stay up to date with the hottest trends in kids' popular culture. Over the years, some have even transcended their tiny plastic bags to become cultural events of their own. Today, we rediscover these as lost relics of a golden era the totems of our youth. The collection of toys McDonald's released for the first Spy Kids film were eclectic, to say the least, but no one knew what an absolute cultural explosion Spy Kids would turn out to be. So when it came time for round two, the McMarketing department got to work rubbing those greasy little brain cells together to create something worthy of the name. Before we move on to the actual toys, let me give you a quick lesson in marketing. I promise this will all tie back together. Putting a small, cute sidekick creature in your movie is basically just a cheat code for printing money. Baby Yoda, Gizmo, Dog from Up, Pikachu, Olaf, Zero, Donkey, Scooby-Doo, Scrappy-Doo, uh, kinda, BB-8, Baby Groot, all 101 Dalmatians, every minion cute Madagascar lemur, and literally thousands more that I didn't mention. You may have noticed that most of these examples are from Disney Properties, a company that rarely, if ever, excludes this concept. Spy Kids 2 would hop on the bandwagon as well. The introduction of Junie's pet robot bug thing, Ralph, was such a gigabrain move it deserved its own Oscar category, a spy gadget that was also a pet. In universe, Ralph stands for Robotic Arachnid Lithium Photo Helper. Because, uh, sure, why not? Now, technically, in order to be an arachnid, eight legs are a requirement, where Ralph only has six, making him an insect. But, uh, Rilf just doesn't have the same ring to it. I'd have gone with the more scientific route and named it Ricky, for Robotic Insect, cool, crazy Yankee. Yankee, because he works for the US government. How is this all relevant? Well, let's move on to the blunderbuss of Happy Meal Toy Strategy, combining toys. An extremely common tactic to get kids coming back for more Happy Meals is to make them share functionality with each other. Often, if you complete the whole set, your reward is a bigger, cooler toy of all of them put together. This was the case for Spy Kids 2. If you collect all six gadgets, your reward is the real toy, your own Ralph. Yeah, imagine paying for your McDonald's toy in installments. Hi, I'm here to make a car payment. Great. Do you want the steering wheel or the muffler? What? Only 59 more months until you have all the car pieces. Now that class is over, let's move on to the actual toys. I've collected all six, all still sealed in their bags. Time to expose these poor fellows to 19 cumulative years of air pollution. 
Number one is the double agent watch. It has two meanings in that the watch has two functions, while also suggesting that the wearer is a traitor to their own country. In place of a watch band, we have what are clearly four of Ralph's legs to wrap around your wrist. On the watch itself, we have a small compass, which doesn't work, and a uh, digital clock, which doesn't work. I can imagine wearing this to school, thinking my ability to port north would make me the coolest kid on the playground. I'd probably just get called a nerd though. Not that the watch would have had any effect on that. Number two is the spy signal device. Also a wearable gadget, I have to give this one a high ranking in style points. Two telescoping tendrils wrap around your fingers and would presumably shine a light to annoy your cat with. After a lot of trying, I was finally able to move the on switch, and the result easily made this gadget my favorite. The button on top can be pushed to either the left or the right. Each direction corresponds to one of the finger lights, one being red and the other green. Using this, you could easily send messages to fellow spies. Why is all this shit too small for me? Next is 3, the spy communicator. If there were any nerds with you in mom's minivan during a post-soccer practice McDee's run, this one's for them. Underneath there's a storage for a single small pencil. I do love how the pencil comes absolutely unsharpened, like they knew the first thing some kid would do is stick it in their eye. Still a bold choice to include anything with the suggestion of a point. You could say the same about this video though. What's the pencil for, you may ask? For the small notepad on top. With your spy communicator, you can now sneakily write and pass notes to your friends at school. Teacher will never know. 4. The Secret Agent Shades I was looking forward to these since I missed the spy glasses from my Spy Kids 1 toy haul. These absolutely blow. The side stalks fall off anytime you breathe too hard, they fall apart at the middle, and they're tinted a headache-inducing fruit punch color. But the one saving grace, you can use them to decode this expertly scrambled message. It's Ralph. As if taunting you that if you don't collect all six toys, he'll never be yours. Number five, Ralph's giant head. I mean, the secret agent viewers. I always wanted this one when I'd see commercials for the toys on TV. I just loved Ralph's innocent, doofy gaze. The green eye domes can be moved to expose the lenses and the toy becomes a pair of binoculars. You can hardly see out of them, but I don't know any other binoculars that come with a pull-out side mirror. You can see what's off in the distance while also watching your back. The Spy Badge. This one bears the most resemblance to anything you'd see in the movie, besides Combination Ralph, of course. But a security badge isn't very fun to play with, so how do you make it better? That's easy, make it shoot people. That's right, this security badge is also a disc launcher. A lot of fast food toys relied heavily on disc shooters because children love waking up and choosing violence. This one is actually a big improvement over the Spy Kids 1 disc launcher. It actually works pretty consistently and has a lot more power behind the throws. Now that we have the pieces, we can accomplish a lifelong goal, my own Ralph. We can rebuild him. We have the technology. Building Ralph was an absolute nightmare. I have to give credit to the theory behind how all the parts fit together. They clearly put a lot of thought into how each gadget would connect to make the final product. In practice though, it was awful. None of the parts wanted to stay together. I was fighting Ralph every step of the way. The sunglasses legs were especially bad, they snapped off at the slightest push. And here he is, the king himself, standing in all his glory. If you had this guy as a kid, you win, no questions asked. Your car probably also smelled like fry oil though. When fully built, Ralph really can't do anything. None of the functions of the separate gadgets carry over. All he can do is stand there, and even that's a struggle. His giant head throws off the weight balance so much that his little legs need to be positioned exactly correct or else he'll fall over. Was it worth it after 19 years of waiting? 
no, but also kind of. He is pretty cool, even though all he does is stand there. Now that we have Ralph, though, let's put him to the test, BattleBot style. <laughs> 